We've placed our pictures in the gallery by setting them as textures on specific faces within this object, which is our gallery space. And most of them have imported correctly, except for this coral image, which has come in um, sideways and zoomed in about two times. Image. I also took the liberty of screwing up this image a little bit just so we'd have another problem to solve in case it comes up when you load your image in. So to deal with this, we're going to actually have to leave, uh, we can select our object and we'll have to leave the um, layout tab and go to this tab called UV editing. So now if this opens by default, you may not be able to see the pictures on this side um, if it defaults to just the object view. So once you're in here, you want to make sure that um, the um, right viewing window is set to material view so you can see your pictures. Um, this will default, um, the left side will default in different ways, but in this case it's opened up quite zoomed in. So I'm just going to hover over this left tab and zoom out by either scrolling or in this case using a trackhead pinching um, until I can see the whole image. And now I can see the issue. So the UV editor shows you how an object or a face unwraps in this window here. Um, if we had um, this entire room selected, which I can do for a moment, you can see that it's unwrapped this whole object. We can see all the different faces and how they would overlap this image if it were the texture for the whole image. Um, I'm just gonna select this face again. So now we just have this one rectangle. So in this window, um, we can use the same tools that we can use for editing 3D objects. It's just in a 2D space. So I'm gonna hit A, um, which will select this whole box here. And then I'll hit G for grab to move. And as I move the mouse around, you can see this box moves and you can see that the image of the coral within the space moves too. Um, so I'll just kind of eyeball it close to center. And then I'll hit R, um, which is the rotational, um, the rotate tool. And I can see that I need to rotate it clockwise. So I don't, I will just put in the number 90 now and it'll probably be properly rotated. If when rotating by hand, I saw that I needed to rotate counterclockwise, then I would enter minus 90 for negative 90 degrees. So having um, rotated it correctly, I'll just tap the trackpad or click the mouse. Um, we have our image centered, and now I'll just, or our face centered over the image, and now I'll press S for size, and just enlarge the face until it fits the image. Now, if the face is enlarging too quickly, you can hold down shift and get a little bit more of a nuanced um, adjustment there. Um, and I'm gonna go with that, that's close enough. So rotating my scene here, um, this image actually did come in correctly, but I wanted to create more problems. So we can see that the image is zoomed in and it's upside down. Now, an interesting thing you can see on this side, selecting pressing A to select this whole thing, now pressing G to move it around, is it kind of treats the image like it's never ending. You can see if I go off to the sides, it just keeps going, it kind of mirrors and tiles um, because it's treating it like a texture, which is fine. So I will center this and now I know it's upside down, so I'll just press R and 180. Um, I don't need to worry about whether it's a positive or a negative because it's just a half rotation, so it'll be the same either way. Now I'll press S whoop, and enlarge this a little bit more. Press S again. And, you know, I could, I guess I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, There we go. So it looks like I didn't exactly guess my ratios, or I think I threw them off when I added these bevels to the wall, but that's okay. We're just throwing together a really basic gallery space. Um, I'll have an extra advanced section um, for after you've completed this with um, some other tools so you can avoid these problems and get your picture to exactly the right aspect. 
um, the goal of this tutorial is to try to use as, to, as few tools as possible. So having got that in, I can go back to the layout view and everything in here looks good. Um, I'm going to turn the visibility back on on the floor so I can see it. And I'm also going to switch to render view so I can get a better sense of how my lighting is working. And now I can see that my lighting in this gallery looks pretty bad because my light is not in the room. It's also important to note that while we don't see it now, there is a ceiling on this room that will eventually render, which means that um, the room will be pitch black. There'll be no light in there at all. Um, right now, I have my rendering engine open on cycles, set to cycles, which is why um, the image gets pixely as I rotate it. Um, cycles is our preferred rendering engine for output, but for here, which looks like the back of a digital SLR camera, and I'm going to change the rendering engine to Eevee. Um, Eevee has less sophisticated shadows, but it's a game engine and it renders quickly. And in the next section, uh, we'll go over the difference between rendering engines in a little bit more detail. So a quick way to get the light back to the middle of the room is I can click on the light here, or I can um, select it in the layers. If you've accidentally erased your light, you can go to press Shift A for add and just simply add a point light source, which is what this is. So having selected it, I will right click on the light and there's this option snap. And I will choose this option, snap selection to cursor. And now the light has dropped right on the floor in the middle of our scene. Um, the next stage um, is I will switch um, briefly back to object view. I press option Z. Um, so I'm in the transparent uh, x-ray mode, I mean. Um, I will click the x-axis or y, it doesn't matter, I just need to look at it from the side. And still select it on light, I'll press G, and now I can see I'm moving the light around. So I'll just hit Z and just put it up close to where the ceiling will be. So now we have our light shining into our space. And even if we zoom all the way into our space, when we put the ceiling on, it doesn't block the light because the light is inside there. Um, so that's it for this stage. And in the next stage, we'll go over placing our camera into the scene and actually um, rendering out our gallery for VR.